14,000 miles of wire, spun into a web of steel. For more than a century, it has held one of the world's great icons against the sky, bearing colossal weight on its slender strands. The secret to this incredible strength lies not in the final form, but in a meticulous process of creation. To forge a cable reliable enough for life-or-death missions, the journey begins deep within iron ore mines and continues inside the sprawling steel mill. There, alloys are melted at blistering temperatures, cast into solid billets, and subjected to rigorous inspections. Only then is the steel drawn into fine wires and expertly twisted into the finished cable, ready to serve projects around the world. This intricate dance of massive machinery and precise operations reveals how simple twisted steel gains the power to endure for decades, even in the harshest conditions. It was born in the darkness of the earth, a simple answer to a dangerous problem. Today it reaches for the sky, defining the modern world. In the 1830s, the deep mines of Germany faced a crisis as traditional hemp ropes began to fail under immense strain. The arrival of steel wire rope changed everything, allowing hoist to plunge safely for hundreds of meters into the earth and unlocking the era of large-scale industrial mining. Nearly two centuries on, this foundational technology has woven itself into the fabric of almost every industry imaginable. From critical infrastructure and heavy industry to oil and gas extraction, shipping, and even renewable energy, global consumption now exceeds 10 million tons annually. Millions of elevators worldwide depend on its strength, enabling skyscrapers to climb ever higher and fundamentally sculpting the skylines of our cities. Yet its true genius lies in the relationship between its slender profile and its staggering load-bearing capacity. Within its structure, bundles of tightly wound steel wires provide remarkable flexibility while evenly distributing immense forces across the entire cross-section. This elegant design means a cable just a few centimeters thick can suspend hundreds of tons, a quiet mechanical miracle at the heart of the modern world. Before it can suspend bridges or lift impossible weights, it must be violently torn from the earth. The journey begins deep within colossal ore mines where high-power drilling systems carve precise holes into solid rock, preparing it for the blast. A series of controlled detonations then shatters the rock face, fracturing it and exposing immense blocks of reddish-brown iron ore. Towering hydraulic excavators scoop up boulders weighing dozens of tons, loading them onto mine trucks capable of carrying payloads of several hundred tons each. Following meticulously planned routes, these haulers work in a constant procession, transporting the raw material out of the vast, open pit. Upon reaching the stockpile area, the ore cascades into massive hoppers, beginning a new journey along conveyor belts that stretch for hundreds of meters. Here, vibrating screens and powerful magnetic separators work to sift out dirt, sand, and other coarse impurities. The pre-processed material is then systematically crushed into smaller, more manageable pieces, a step that simplifies both transport and smelting. From there, specialized rail wagons and immense bulk cargo ships take over, each hauling thousands of tons at a time. This entire cycle of extraction and primary processing operates without pause, a relentless rhythm that ensures a steady supply of raw material for the world's steel industry. It arrives as rock, but will be reborn in fire. As the ore trains deliver their cargo to the steelworks, the smelting process ignites. Thousands of tons of iron ore, blended with recycled scrap metal, cascade into the cavernous mouth of an electric arc furnace as tall as a building. Inside this crucible, giant graphite electrodes descend, unleashing immense currents that generate a heat climbing past 2,900 degrees, turning solid metal into a swirling, volcanic mass. A precise alchemy then begins as engineers introduce alloys to forge the steel's character. Manganese is added for strength, chromium or nickel to ward off corrosion, and silicon to improve its ductility. At the same time, quicklime and floor spar form a molten blanket of slag that rises to the surface. This layer acts as a liquid filter, drawing out impurities and refining the steel below leaving it purer and stronger with every passing moment. Throughout this violent ballet, the massive electrodes continuously stir the mixture, 
while a network of modern sensors monitors the chemical balance with exacting precision. Once the molten steel achieves the required purity and composition, it flows onward to be cast. The age of pouring batch by batch is gone. Today, a continuous river of hot steel is channeled into copper molds, which are jacketed with forced water cooling systems. The instant the searing liquid meets the chilled mold walls, an outer shell solidifies, while the core remains molten. Solidification progresses from the outside in, forming solid billets several meters long with a square or rectangular profile. Still glowing with thousands of degrees of retained heat, the billets are not allowed to rest. They are sent directly into the jaws of the primary rolling mill. Here, colossal rollers of hardened alloy steel rotate without pause, exerting immense pressure on the hot metal. With each pass, the billet is squeezed, flattened, and stretched, its thickness shrinking as its length grows. This ordeal repeats across multiple rolling stands, gradually transforming the billet's shape into smaller, semi-finished forms, like round bars or flat strips. The extreme temperature keeps the steel pliable, allowing it to deform without cracking under the strain. At the same time, these repeated mechanical forces are forging the steel from within, realigning its internal grain structure to create a material that is more uniform, stronger, and more stable. From the fiery embrace of the hot rollers, the semi-finished steel now faces a different trial. It is sent to the cold rolling line to be drawn into wires of precise dimensions. The process starts as hissing jets of high-pressure water quench the glowing bars from the rolling mill. The cooled steel then enters a new series of rolling stands where large alloy rollers apply massive pressure, methodically thinning and elongating the bar with each pass. Its cross-section, whether square or rectangular, is gradually reshaped into the round or flat forms needed for the final draw. Now, the steel is pulled through a succession of dies, each with a progressively smaller diameter. Every pass makes the wire thinner and its surface smoother, while further refining its internal structure. Though this shaping happens at room temperature, it is a process of extreme precision, requiring strict control over pulling force, speed, and the friction between the steel and the die. The slightest deviation can cause the wire to snap, warp, or lose its essential ductility. Along the line, beams of laser light continuously measure the wire's diameter, feeding data to automated systems that adjust the pulling force in real time. The result is a coil of high-strength steel wire produced with near-perfect dimensional accuracy and the durability needed for the trials ahead. But achieving the perfect dimension is only the beginning. To unlock its true potential, the wire must now endure the furnace. It snakes into a chamber where it is heated to an extreme temperature, typically between 1,500 and 700 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside this furnace, a tightly controlled atmosphere governs the heating rate and gas composition. The intense heat does more than make the wire glow cherry red. It triggers a fundamental transformation, realigning the metal's crystalline lattice. This metamorphosis gives the steel its ideal balance of hardness for bearing loads and ductility for twisting without fracture. The moment it reaches the target temperature, the wire is guided from the furnace and plunged directly into the quenching zone. Here, jets of high pressure air or baths of specialized industrial oil rapidly cool the steel, locking its newly formed structure in place. Its inner strength now locked in, the wire moves on to receive its outer armor. Depending on its final purpose, each strand is covered with a protective layer, most often a zinc galvanizing or a polymer coating. In environments exposed to moisture, seawater, or corrosive chemicals, this layer will act as an invisible shield, preventing the wire from oxidizing over time. First, a mild acid bath strips away all traces of dirt, grease, and microscopic rust. The cleaned wire is then submerged in a bath of molten zinc, or pass through a polymer coating system where temperature and pressure are meticulously controlled. The coating must be perfectly uniform and firmly bonded without the slightest air pocket. Even the smallest gap could become a point of failure, causing the entire wire to deteriorate rapidly once in the field. Even with its new strength and protective armor, the wire's journey is not over. It must now face its final trial, a gantlet of inspection where no flaw can hide. Under the scrutiny of advanced sensors, 
nothing can be concealed. The diameter must be accurate to fractions of a millimeter, and the surface must be free of any warping or geometric distortion. A tiny deviation, if overlooked, could one day become the cause of catastrophic failure. Data from each wire is recorded, analyzed, and cross-referenced against stringent technical standards. At the first sign of an irregularity, the wire is immediately removed from the production line. This is not merely a quality check. It is an ultimate selection process, ensuring only the strongest and most uniform steel warriors advance to perform on the world stage. Having passed every test, the individual wires are finally ready to become something greater. They are transferred to the stranding line, where they will be twisted together into a complete cable. Here, dozens, sometimes hundreds, of wire spools are mounted on massive rotating frames. As the machine comes to life, these frames begin a rhythmic mechanical dance, spinning around a central axis while pulling the wires under tension and twisting them into a precisely designed helical pattern. At the heart of this spinning vortex, engineers introduce the appropriate core. It may be a steel core, creating an ultra-strong cable for withstanding high tensile loads, or one of synthetic fibers like polypropylene, which makes the cable lighter and more resistant to corrosion. The wires are first grouped into smaller bundles known as strands, and then multiple strands are twisted around the core to form the finished cable. Throughout this intricate process, sensors continuously monitor tension, twist angle, and vibration. If any wire is pulled too tightly or left too loose, the system adjusts in real time to maintain perfect uniformity. The stranding speed is also tightly controlled. Moving too fast could deform the wires, while moving too slow would cripple efficiency. With the first layer complete, the machine continues its work, winding on successive layers, each nested compactly according to the design. Each layer serves a distinct purpose. The outer layer resists abrasion, the middle layer bears the primary load, and the inner layer stabilizes the entire structure. This distribution of labor makes the finished cable both flexible enough for installation and strong enough to withstand loads of hundreds of tons. But the finished cable is not yet ready for the field. It requires one final application, a protective coating of specialized lubricant. This final layer is applied either by drawing the cable through an immersion bath or by blasting it with high-pressure sprayers, depending on its structure and intended use. The pulling speed is synchronized with the spray system, ensuring that every section of the cable receives an even coating. Flow and temperature sensors regulate the amount of oil used, maintaining a consistent viscosity throughout. The lubricants, typically mineral or synthetic-based oils, are formulated to penetrate deep into the grooves between the twisted wires. For cables destined for marine environments or continuous dynamic loads, the oil is fortified with additives that resist oxidation and protect against electrochemical corrosion. This final anointing is critical, preserving the cable's mechanical performance and ensuring it is ready to perform from the moment it is deployed. To prove its strength, it must first be broken. To demonstrate its resilience, it must be pushed past its limits. Even after receiving its protective lubrication, the cable's journey is far from over. Its mechanical performance must now be validated against the most unforgiving conditions imaginable, a final trial to prove its endurance. This inspection relies on a formidable array of equipment, from massive hydraulic tensile machines to cyclic bending rigs fitted with sensitive micro-strain sensors. One machine pulls the cable with relentless force until it finally snaps, revealing its absolute load-bearing limit. Elsewhere, other rigs twist and bend samples under immense pressure, simulating a lifetime of severe operational stress. The slightest irregularity, from a microscopic crack to a subtle deviation in structural uniformity, results in immediate rejection. Only the cables that endure this brutal gauntlet are cleared to move forward. With its integrity confirmed, the approved cable is guided into a vast industrial coiling system. A central controller and a network of load sensors meticulously regulate the winding speed and tension, preventing any slack or uneven overlaps. A synchronized dance begins between a rotating turntable and a transverse guide rail, which lays each loop of cable into its precise groove. On the most advanced lines, cameras and displacement sensors monitor the process, detecting and correcting any deviation in real time. 
As the coiling concludes, hydraulic clamps firmly secure the cable's ends, while traceability codes and batch data are printed directly onto the coil's core. Each finished coil is then mounted onto a steel or engineered wood pallet and tightly wrapped in heat shrink film or oil cloth for protection against moisture. Overhead cranes transfer the pallets high into the ceiling area before forklifts ferry them to the logistic zone, ready to leave the factory on flatbed trucks or in specialized containers equipped with anti-roll compartments. From a silent block of metal, a titan of tensile strength is born. With the compartments now ready to leave the factory, the cycle is complete. The journey from a raw ingot to a high-strength steel cable stands as a monument to precision and technological force. Behind this transformation lies an intricate system, one where the smallest component carries the weight of the entire design.